Again, welcome to CS101, Introduction to Programming Using Python. This lab work will cover chapter five of our course textbook. Again, previously we went through the lectures, which is again, Python user defined functions. So our main objective is to use again, Python code for chapter five, which is Python user defined functions solutions. We are going to solve two problems. So our first problem is, Many financial experts advise that property owners should ensure their homes or buildings for at least 80% of the amount it will cost to replace the structure. Now we should write a program that asks the user to enter the re replacement cost of the building, then display the minimum amount of insurance he or she should buy for the property. Again, here we are going to practice how we can write our own user-defined function or our own function. So normally we can solve this problem using the techniques in chapter two. That means we get our input. The input will be the cost of the building. And our, this means our insurance will be 80% of the cost of the building. So we can declare a constant variable and initialize it to 0.8. Then we use the input function to get the input from the user, the cost of the building. Then we multiply 0 0.8 with the cost of the building. Then we display our results. By here, our goal is to start learning how we can use, again, Python main function, user-defined functions, etc. So normal, as we said in the lectures, we have to create our own function first. Then we are going to call the function inside the main function. So for example, here, we start with the global constants uh, variable. This constant variable, we initialize it to 2.8 because it's 80% of the amount for the insurance. So we have that. Now, this is our main function, which we start with, with the keyword DEF. Then we have the name of the function is main. This is where the executions will take place at. So our user-defined function is here. Now, in lectures, we said if we are writing our user-defined function, we start with the keyword DEF or DEF or definition, then the function name, then the argument of the function. The argument of the function is the data or the message or the information that the function will use. So sometimes we may have a function whereby the argument will be empty which means the function doesn't need any information. For example, to write a function to print a statement, uh, a string most likely doesn't need any information. So let's look at this program. So we write our user-defined function. The function name is show insured. It takes two arguments, the replacement and also the main insured. We are going to explain these two variables, what it means. So what this function will do is that it's going to print the replacement cost. So we can see here, we have the string replacement cost with the dollar sign. We also use the format function to format, again, our result to two decimal places, which would be like uh, money. And there's, we have a separator or SEP should equal to empty space. So this is a formatting. And now the replacement here means the amount that we're going to replace. So that's what it is. Then next, we are going to print the replacement percentage. So we have the replace percent times 100. So whatever the replace is, we multiply by 100. And we format it to, again, it to be percentage. Then we also want to have the minimum insured. So here we print minimum insured and then we use the format function. So we may have two decimal places. So we have 0.2 F, F stand for the float to decimal places. And also the SCP will be an empty space between the values. Um, then we call this. So normally when you write your function finish, we go to the main function, we are going to call this function the main function. Then also we have to always, when we finish at the end, we have to call the main function by writing the main and open and close parentheses. 
uh, as we said again in the lectures. So let's go back and see how this works. So now we have our two local variables, the replace and also the main more, uh, or the main insured. Two variables we need to make sure it's zero. We initialize it to zeros to make sure it's empty. Now we ask the user to give us the amount. So here we say you enter the replacement amount. So when the user enter the replacement amount, it will be stored in the replace. So that's why we saw this variable in our uh, user defined function as argument because we're going to display it. Then next, we calculate the insurance amount. Now it we have a variable the main insure equal to the replacement amount times 0.8. Now replace percent is the 0.8. Then we print the information by the insurance. Now, this is where we call the function. So this is why previously I said this uh, this problem, we can solve it without, we don't need to use the main function. We don't need a user defined function. But again, this is chapter five. We are learning the syntax and how to again, develop or create a user defined function on our own. So anytime you have a, you create a user defined function, you, we call it in the main function. So you can see in the main function, we have show, ensure, the replace, and also main ensure. Then we have to write the task. What the show ensure would do is what we have here. So when we run this program, the result that will print will be the re replacement cost, whatever the amount is, in two decimal, uh, like dollars and two cent, uh, cents would be in two decimal numbers. Then also we want to print the replacement percent, which will be 80%. Then also we print the minimum insurance. The minimum insurance, again, depends on the amount we enter for the replacement or the replacement amount. So again, in the Python uh, user defined function, we start with the keyword def, the function name, and if it has any argument, we include it. If it's more than one, we should have a common space between. Then we write our code. Again, here we indent it. And as we said earlier, indention means everything okay. here contains, give, belongs to the function. So call the function here doesn't belong to the function, it's out, it's aligned with the function. So let's go to the next problem. The next problem said, there are three sitting categories at a stadium. Class A seat costs $20, class B seat costs $15, and class C seat costs $10. Write a program that asks how many tickets for each class of seat were sold, then display the amount of income generated from the ticket sales. Again, this problem can be solved without using the main function and also without using uh, define function. So with that, I don't have, we don't have to create a user defined function. We can just get our input, do our process. Our process here will be to calculate amount of time, uh, um, sorry, amount of income generated from the ticket sale. So the input will be the number of class A tickets sold, class B and class C. The costs are done already. So if it's 10 tickets sold for class C, it will be 10 times 10. 20 tickets sold for class B, it will be 20 times 15. So here, first thing we want to see is the user-defined function. So our user-defined function here also, the same thing, we want to show the income. So after we do all the calculation finish, we write a function name, show income, to print the result for us, the total income generated for the total seed select uh, sold. So let's see the code first. We know the constant values because the class A ticket is always sold for $20. So we declare constant variable, class A seat 20, class B seat 15, class C seat 10, because that's what they gave us in the question. Now, we need an input. Our input will be three different classes of seats. 
or class A seat. So we name our variable count A seat, count B seat, count C seat. This will tell us the number. Again, this will be an input from the user. Based on the question here, they say we should write a program that asks the user how many tickets for each class. So that will be those tickets count A, count B, count C, how many for each class of seat. Then we are going to display our total income, but we know each class A, B, C have different amount, different costs. Class A costs $20, class B 15, class C 10. So what we can do is that we declare variable income A seat, income B seat, income C seat, so that we can find a separate amount for each seat, A, B, C. So for example, user enter 20 for count A seat. Then income A seat will be 20 times 20. But we can write the variable class A seat times count A seat. So that will give me count A income for count A seat. Now income for B seat will be class B seat, which is 15 times how many uh, seats that the user enter, which will be count B seat. So these six variables are needed. The first three will give us the number of seats for each, again, class A, B, and C seats. Then we are going to put our result generated for each A, B, and C seat also. So next, we ask the user to get the input. So we ask the user to enter the count of A seat. We also ask the user to enter the count of B seat. We ask the user to enter the count of C seat. And we store those values in count A seat, count B seat, count C seat. Now we finish with our input. We do our calculation so we calculate the A income. It will be count A seat times class A seat. Class A seat again is $20. Now the income count A seat depends on what the user enter for A, B seat, uh, number of seats. So the same thing we calculate for B and we also calculate for C. So C will be count C seat times count C rate seats. Then here we want to print our income. So we call our function show income. So this is the user defined function we are going to write. So we call the function show income and it's going to print income A seat, income B seat, income C seat. And this is the code. So we start with the keyword def. The function name again is show income. It takes three arguments, income A seat, income B seat, income C seat. Now the total income we we create the variable, initialize it to Z. Yeah, it's called a local variable because this variable can only be used inside show income. Only show income function can see this variable. So after that, we calculate the total income here. So if we look at the main function, we didn't calculate the total income. We just calculate the income for class A, B, and C. If we like, we can calculate the total income here and we can say total income is uh, income A seat plus income B seat plus income C seat. Then in this case, our show income function will only print the result. But here we decided we want to do the calculation here. Then we print the result also here. Then later we call the main function. So when we call the main function, Again, execution start from main function. So the first thing, the program record what class A seat consists of, B seat consists of class C seat. Then it go through the three variable, which is okay. We have user enter the three values. We calculate each income A seat, income B seat, income C. Then when we reach here, we call the again, the function name show income. Then the function show income will go through the process here to calculate the total income, which is income A seat plus income B seat plus income C seat. Then it will print the result for us. Again, we went through the format function, which we use to format our output. In this case, we want to have two decimal places for the cent for each. 
So that will be the conclusion for this lab work. Again, this lab work will look at these two problems. Again, go through them if you have any question. Again, we meet in class or you can send an email. Thank you.